Welcome back to Big Dan's Air Gun Review Channel. Today we'll be looking at a... Wait a minute. Are you sure this is an air rifle? I don't see no air cylinder underneath and I don't know how you're supposed to cock that bloody thing. Anyways, I guess we've got to uh, take a look at this thing then. The Artemis M30. Let's move on to features and see exactly what this thing is all about. Starting off at the rear of the rifle we've got a ventilated butt pad. We've also got the very straight looking sporter style cheek piece here, which is pretty much the exact same on either side. If I can just move around here to demonstrate. Although the bolt, as you can see, is on the right hand side, this is very much an ambidextrous stock. There is no real difference between the left and right side here, so it's a very lefty friendly rifle. Moving back round to the side, you can see the rifle also comes with a nice little bit of checkering in the uh, pistol style grip here. If we move over to the other side of the rifle, you can see that this is, as mentioned, a right-handed model and does come with a nicely figured oversized bolt. Moving all the way back to this side again, you can see the trigger mechanism here. The trigger is a two-stage and it is fully adjustable. You can also see the safety at the minute is in the fire position but is built into the trigger blade. Moving on from the trigger, we get to the action. You can see in there right now there is the single shot tray, but each M30 does come with a multi-shot magazine as well. And we'll go more in depth with that when we get to the handling section of this review. Moving slightly further along to the stock, you can see we've got another little piece of checkering here on the forestock. And also in here, you'll also find a double regulator system. And due to this, it actually boosts the shot count of the M30, despite well, how it looks like it has no air cylinder at all at the moment. Um, the shot count due to the uh, double regulator system is actually in 177, well above 200. Each rifle is slightly different, but don't be too surprised if even you're knocking on the door of 250. Moving on to the barrel itself. Moving further along, we get to the really interesting part of this gun, and that is the barrel. You see, unlike many guns, this barrel actually is surrounded by the air cylinder itself. The air cylinder, the barrel, sorry, is in the center of this ball barrel setup you can see here. What you can see here is not a shroud, that is the actual air cylinder, as you can see here, written on the side, 25 MPA max pressure. Also located inside the barrel is a set of baffles, which keeps the M30 incredibly quiet, even straight out of the box, which we will demonstrate for you later. Moving back to the stock. Moving away from our air cylinder barrel setup, one other nice little feature to the M30 is the fact that if you look just underneath here, you have two air gauges. The first air gauge is actually the remaining pressure in the tank, and the second air gauge is actually the regulator pressure, so you know exactly what the rifle is doing at all times. As soon as you see the regulator pressure starts bleeding off, you can see at the minute, you can just about make that out, it's sitting at 90, which is pretty much the sweet spot for UK power limits. When that starts bleeding off, you know that you're turning your, your regulator can no longer hold the air pressure, and it's going from a regulated gun to an unregulated gun. So you can keep tabs on what the gun's doing at all times, which is another pretty good idea in my opinion. Well, that's features out of the way. Now let's see just how this great big gun feels when it's put to your shoulder. So then, let's move on to handling. So then, handling. What's the M30 like? Well, first things first, you may have noticed that the uh, screen ratio might have changed ever so slightly. Um, I've had to change lens because this thing is so long it wouldn't actually fit in the, um, the standard setup that we use. Literally, all you could see is pretty much just back here and my mug. But, so uh, we shall persevere either way. But no, huge gun. How does it feel when put to the shoulder? Actually, not what you'd expect it to be like. The gun is surprisingly light, despite the size of it. It's comfortably, I know I use this as the gauge quite a lot, but it's because it's a good gun, many people have shot them. But it is lighter than a Walther Rotex, and I'll say this as well. Again, don't mean to keep picking on the Walther Rotex, we all know they're a good gun. But it's better balanced than a Rotex as well. In fact, if I'm being honest with you, balance-wise, I mean, it's pretty... You can see that, it's pretty much where my palm is now. It's slightly towards the front, but again, considering you've got this much barrel to work with, I mean, it's pretty centre, to be fair. Give them some credit, the designers some credit. But, um, yeah, no, it shoulders really nicely, to be fair with you. It doesn't feel like I'm... How can I put it? I might as well just be holding something like the Artemis M16 we reviewed earlier, which is a much, much shorter rifle 
compared to this one. But that's the balance and such and the weight sorted out. And again, with this length, it is immensely pointable as well. I'm not going to lie to you. It's great fun looking away from the scope and seeing this huge shrouded barrel poking up the front. But let's try the bolt then. Let's see. This is empty at the moment. We're just going to dry fire it. Let's see what the, uh, the bolt's like. Pretty damn smooth. I will say, when this was first taken out of the box, this has been sort of... It's, it's been put through the, the chrono, I'll put it that way. It is pre it's pretty much brand new. There's been a couple of pellets put through it, but again, it's not. Uh, it's hardly run in, I'll put it that way. Um, but no, when it was taken out of the box, the, bo the, the bolt is slightly notchy, you might find, when you first pull it out. But again, you saw that there and then. It's smoothened up beautifully. Let's try the trigger and see what this is like. Pretty good. Again, uh, I know the sound won't come out so well as you watching this as what I can hear now, but that's with no pellet in there, so it's going to be louder than when you put a pellet in. And it's pretty damn quiet, if I say so myself. The trigger itself is also it's pretty nice. If I'm being honest, I do have, as you can probably see, long fingers, but the trigger's a little bit far forwards maybe for my taste. If that could maybe be set back there as standard, that would be spot on perfect. Then you could proper get your finger around it or get your tip around it. Whereas at the minute, it is, you've got to sort of stretch for it just a tiny little bit. The trigger should have been hooked back just a tiny, tiny little bit in my opinion. But again, the trigger itself is still, let's just give it another go. It's a nice trigger, to be fair. The first stage is fairly nice and light. The second stage is pretty responsive. You can feel definitely when it kicks in and off she goes. It's pretty nice and crisp. But other than that, handling-wise, I actually think I'm, well, I'm genuinely surprised by the, the M30. It's actually a really, I mean, look. <laughs> Certain people wouldn't be able to do this with something like a Rotex or anything like that, but it's it's surprisingly light. It's a really nicely balanced and, and uh, weighted gun, if I'm being honest with you. And again, just the, I know this is something silly, but just being able to look down that barrel when you do something like this, it just puts a huge smile on my face. It really does. It's, it's, I've never seen or handled a rifle like this before. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the magazines now then, and how you exchange this single shot tray for the multi-shot mag and then we'll move on to loading as well and then we get the bit that I'm sure we're all looking forward to and that is accuracy mind you I'm not sure if I should do the accuracy results sitting back I mean let's be honest the gun's about three yards long anyway isn't it so then changing this from a single shot to a multi-shot as you can see at the minute we've got the single shot tray and removing this could not be simpler simply pull the bolt straight back into its lock position flip the single shot tray out like so you can see the uh, the tray itself uses a, a magnet that's planted in the bottom of the tray. And you can see there, there is a magnet just in the action. I'm not sure if you can just get that in the camera. And uh, that will obviously suck it in place, just give it that little bit of extra security. The mag also has the exact same setup. You can see the magnet there. And you can use these just as a point of reference, just to slide them in. You can see there's a sort of cutout, sort of slider, a groove on the back there of the mag. Simply line that up, line that up with the groove in here and you're ready to go like so. And you just have to close the bolt and you're ready to go shooting. So let's now get to loading the mag because these, a bit like the P15 magazines, they're a little bit different and I'll show you what I mean. Right, here we have the 12-shot self-indexing magazine. I'm going to show you what I mean now and what you have to do to load the mag on an M30 because it's not like a standard mag where you simply load the pellets in the top and that's it. With this one you have to spin the mag all the way around like so and then at the rear of the mag you can see there the little hole where the pellet will be pushed through. Simply load a pellet, skirt first into the first slot. Oh, fighting with it a little bit here, always does happen when you're on camera. But there you go, and there's the first pellet loaded. And then after that, you simply load the rest of the pellets straight through the top, like a regular mag, and then you'll be ready to shoot. So then, accuracy testing. First things first, you will notice those with uh, good eyesight will tell that this is actually a different day we're filming this on. Unfortunately, when we, once we passed the, um, the handling and feature section of uh, this review yesterday, uh, the weather turned rather nasty and it got dark really quick. Uh, today though, it is quite nice and sunny here in uh, wintry Essex. The only thing is the wind has picked up quite a lot, although it may not look like it now, the wind is actually coming across the field 
through here from left to right and as you can see we've got a bit of a driveway going through there and it is quite gusty down by the target which you can see there that's our 25 yard mark um, this is why I'm doing this part of the review here to show you what we're doing because if I go down there you actually cannot hear a thing I'm saying um, we need to get a lapel mic or something sorted out so you can at least hear me a little bit better but take my word for it that is quite windy down there um, but yeah we'll be doing five shot groups at 25 yards with the M30 as per usual we will be completely unrested and we'll also I've got some coins in my pocket I might set up in a minute as well after this because sadly as you may be able to see just step out here a bit we do have the blue forestry trailer of doom back at our 40 yard mark so sadly we will not be able to do any 40 yard shots at the minute I know the pellets wouldn't necessarily damage the trailer it might it probably wouldn't even puncture the thing it bounce clean off those tires but at the same time the owner of that forestry trailer possesses a firearm certificate and a shotgun certificate so I really don't want to be pushing my luck there if you know what I mean so yeah 25 yards five shot group unrested let's see what the m30 can do So then, 25 yards unseated with the M30. Five shots, how did we do? I do apologize before we start again, as mentioned, for these little holes here. As you can see, they're popping towards us, not going into the card. So this is, as you can see, this is what I was talking about with the nails earlier. I do apologize about that, confusing the group maybe slightly. But there's your five shots, and there's your five pence piece. Nothing wrong with that, is there? But this was with the single shot train which there might be a little bit more consistency with this than the mag. Well, we've still got plenty of daylight left. So, why don't we plonk a new target down there? Let's be extra thorough. We put a new target in there, new fresh one, and we'll do another five shot group, but this time we will use the multi-shot mag and we'll see just what the difference is. So let's plonk up another card and see how the mag does. So then, 25 yards with the multi-shot mag. This group again was shot like with the first group with the single shot tray was using the HN sniper lights. And as you can see here, the group has definitely opened up a bit. Again, the wind, to be fair, you may be able to hear it shaking the, uh, the panels on this old barn around, but the wind has picked up ever so slightly. There's your five pence piece. Let's see, will it fit underneath? It'll still quite happily fit under a five pence piece, but there's no denying it's definitely ever so slightly more opened up than with the single shot tray. Again though, the wind is causing issues. If you, we remember the location of the target card, the wind is blowing from left to right, uh, which again could be causing these. Uh, sniper lights, as in the name, they're not particularly heavy pellet anyway, so they may be affected a bit more by the wind than um, like your, your regular standard pellet. But even so, even with the mag like that, it's, and with the weather as it is, that's still pretty damn impressive. Again, the exact same thing. We're completely unrested when we're doing these shots. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. But so far, we've hit the five pence with the Artemis P15, and we've hit the five pence with the XS30. So why don't we see if the M30 can do the same thing? We'll have three shots with the mag. I'll put the five pence piece in, see if we can hit it, and then we'll do the same thing with the single shot tray. Well, let, let's go single shot tray first, seeing as that seemed to put the best group down. So let's put this five pence piece in position. I'll set the GoPro up. And again, same thing, 25 yards unrested. And let's see what the M30 can do. Right then, five pence challenge. Sorry for sound like I'm shouting. The wind has picked up quite a lot. There's the five P piece. We're gonna have three shots with the single shot tray. See if we can ping it. Now I'll tell you what, I might put another five pence piece next to it and see what we can do, like I said, with the multi-shot mag. Right then, let's crack on, see if we can see a five P go flying. Both coins lifted off. I do apologise again for the sound quality. This wind is getting really quite rough. Both pellets lifted off, but I have a sneaking suspicion that the one with the uh, multi-shot mag might not have been a hit. It didn't leak like the first five pence did. That one was definitely dead on target, but 
didn't quite jump up, did it? Quite the same. And I cannot find the five pence piece. So we may have to call that one a miss. But don't fret, we'll set up another one and we'll give it another go. So the single shot, the multi shot mag, sorry, uh, we still have two shots to go. So let's see what we can do. Better. <laughs> that one definitely flew. I still think we might have caught it ever so slightly low because it went almost vertical when we hit the thing. But once again, that five pence piece is straight up gone. I'll probably find that one on the moon, I imagine. But yeah, so far, single shot tray took one, multi shot mag, two shots. So then, let's take our findings into the final verdict and let's pass off my opinion of what I really think about the Artemis M30. Let's move on. So then, Artemis M30, final verdict, what do we think? Well, it's a hard one to put my finger on, to be honest with you, and it's a hard thing for me to admit to, because as much as I'm not a PCP man, like I say with the P15 review, that little gun, I was honest, it didn't really suit me, um, and the M16D, as lovely thing as it is, especially if you're after something like that, it didn't really tick the boxes for me, there was just no real excitement for me there. But with this... This does something that I don't know how it does it, but no other PCP seems to do. It's just, it's fun. <laughs> I don't know how to put it in any other way. Yeah, a lot of guys and girls might be put off with the way that it looks and the sheer length of the thing, and I can understand that. It's not your traditional looking um, PCP rifle. It looks more like a centerfire or something like that. But you have to shoulder one and actually try one to, to see the appeal in it. It's also, to back up the, these unique looks, it's got the performance as well. One thing I'll say before we look back at the target cards, um, rather embarrassingly, I'm out of five pence pieces. I'm gonna need to start a Patreon or something to get some 5p pieces in or something. But here we go, we've got the 25 yard single shot tray group on the left, and the same thing, but with the multi-shot mag. You can see the multi-shot mag did open up ever so slightly. I've got a, what is a penny look? That's how bad things are getting now. But with the penny, it sits under there absolutely perfectly, and with this, I mean, I'll put it next to it, you can see the penny just absolutely dwarfs it. Um, so it's got the performance there. Uh, Handling-wise, it's also pretty good. Despite how it looks, it is not a heavy gun at all, if I'm being honest with you. I mean, and that's where you can see we've got the Milbro Clearview 4 to 16 by 50 on top, and that's a fairly heavy and pretty big scope, but it's still not that much of a heavy gun, if I'm being honest. It's still probably lighter than my Varark 97, I'll put it that way. And this thing, if you compared, it would be comical, I'll put it that way. If you compared the length of this against the 97, this would eat it alive. But it's well balanced and it's not heavy. So it, it could be used by a vast amount of shooters out there. The only thing that could stop a few people, and it could be, I can see how this could be an issue, is that the reach to the trigger, I mean I've got long fingers, the reach to the trigger is quite a stretch. So that might be an issue maybe for people with smaller hands, smaller fingers, sort of thing. So definitely, before you just blindly put your deposit down on something, definitely have a shoulder of this, put it to, put it to your shoulder, see what you think of it, see how it feels. Um, other than that though, it's a well-specced gun as well. It's got, like I say, the double regulator system that we talked about during the features part, which SMK and 177 say it's usually over 200 shots. To be honest with you, through testing these, the ones we get in, you're more close to the 250 shots per fill. And you've also got those two pressure gauges underneath, one of which is air pressure, what's left in the reservoir, and the other one is showing you exactly what the regulator is doing. So when that regulator one starts dropping off from usually 90 bar in the UK, when that drops off 90 bar, you know that that rig is starting to uh, to pack up. There's not enough air to keep the thing going. But overall, to be honest, it's a very, very unique gun. I can see why many people... Well, it's it's a uh, it'll probably turn into a cult, a cult sort of gun. Um, some people will flock to it, other people might be put off by the looks and the overall length, which is fair enough. I, I can't, obviously this review is subjective, it's just my opinion, but I can see why people might be turned off of it. But overall, again, when we did that accuracy test with the five pence pieces, it definitely, uh, it knocked them up there anyway. That last one, like I said, I think was going to the moon. Um, I could not find any of those coins. They were gone. But overall, uh, if I had to say... A negative, like I say, I do like to try and be as, as honest as physically possible. The negative for me is that if you're using the single shot tray, the hole left behind when you cock the bolt and that bolt probe slides back, 
is huge. You might not be able to see it here. I do apologise. We are losing light very quickly. But it's enough for a pellet, if you're using that shot tray, to easily fall back into the action. And that will jam the entire action up. And it will have to be stripped or hopefully, if you've got it under warranty, take it back and get it looked at. But again, please keep that in mind if you've got one of these. If you're using the mag, you've got no issues at all. And the mag itself, it's a pretty good mag. Like I say, the, it did, the groups did open up ever so slightly with it. But again, that could have been the wind. It was blowing around pretty rough today. But the mag's pretty good to use. Just bear in mind that the first pellet goes in, not the P15. It goes skirt first in the back. And then the rest, you simply spin the dial across and load them from the front. But other than that, the M30, to be honest with you, it's put a huge smile on my face today. And I think most people that come to look at these, I think it will do the same for you as well. But that's it for this episode of Big Dan's Air Gun Reviews. I hope you enjoyed yourself watching this. If you have any questions or would like us to review a gun, please leave a comment down below. We will definitely be doing the Zabroya Kozak hopefully any day now when we order our next one in. And we've also got the new Remington air rifles, spring guns that have come in, the Warhawk and the Sabre, which I'm also very much so looking forward to review. Thanks for watching everyone and take care.